Today we're going to talk about this little universal EFI interface module from Raceback. Uh, what this does is it streams CAN-based data from your dominator to your smart wire. Well, in this video, that's what I'm going to show you what it does. So uh, it also will connect to all this other stuff here, uh, but I am only going to be showing you connecting from a dominator to a smart wire. So if you have a smart wire, you have seen this before, and we'll just say from like here over, okay? When you add the uh, if I can module, what it does is it communicates with the CAN bus uh, from the EFI system. All of these, in the new software that's going to be, or firmware that's going to be released for this thing shortly, I got the okay to make this video, but when, this, when the new software or firmware is out, uh, you will be able to go in here and modify any of the canned, when I say canned, these are like pre-configured channels that the EFI is telling it uh, or is looking at, right? Or the Canvas module is looking at. So uh, you obviously want to leave, you know, the, the engine RPM, coolant temp, you know, oil pressure, all that kind of stuff. But if you have a turbo car, you don't need nitrous stages. If you have a nitrous car, you don't need turbo stuff. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple cool things that you can do with this. So if you're not familiar with the uh, Raceback SmartWire software, it's pretty simple. Uh, in order to modify something, what you would do is you go in here and right click and it will populate this window. You label it. It tells you what pin number you're on, right? So you label it. I always label them with the pin number and then what I want it to do. And then you program a fuse and then you program how many uh, max fuse retries. And what that means is it's um, if the, the fuse current goes over 20, or if the, the current on the channel goes over 20, the fuse will pop, okay? If it pops, you can set a delay. And when I say pop, it doesn't really actually pop the fuse. It just shuts the channel off. Uh, you can program a delay and then how many times it restarts it, okay? So this is a 20 amp channel. You can all, you can run the fuse all the way up to 30 amp. And then you can change it from constant on, this is a trans fan, so we want it to be constant on, to uh, flash, like for your turn signals and whatnot. So the, the abilities here are, are pretty powerful, but by adding the uh, CAN bus module cuts down on a bunch of analog wiring and adds a lot of pretty cool functionality. So uh, what we'll do is for a trans fan, we'll click on condition. And what this is, is uh, these are different conditions that you can choose to turn that output channel on. So KP2 is my keypad, my second keypad, and it's the button that I labeled trans fan. Uh, EFI trans temp is a channel that I assigned um, for uh, for transmission temp to be sent across the CAN bus. And then you've got EFI engine RPM. So I was playing with different temperatures here. Uh, that's why we've got greater than 60, but it's not enabled here. So if we press the, the KP2 trans fan button, I'm going to press it here uh, right now. So listen. Okay, so there's the trans fan running. Or if the transmission temperature exceeds 100 RPM, you know, greater than 100, or not RPM, degrees, if it exceeds 100 and the engine RPM is above 500, then, or it's equal to or above 500, uh, then it will turn on the transmission fan. So I'm not going to start the car, but that's how it works. And if we wanted to watch channel live data, we press channel live data. Notice it says that the status is off, the voltage is zero, and the current is zero. I'm going to turn the trans fan on. We had a large inrush of, uh, of, of amperage in order to get the fan started, and now it settles right around 9.1 amps, 16.2 volts. So we can watch that live, and as the, the, uh, the motor for the fan is winding down, the voltage is coming down as well. So... All this stuff is kind of basic uh, smart wire stuff, but the CAN module adds some pretty neat features. So 
what how you do this is um first i'll show you this one this is i made this efi break pressure so if we look here when it populates this window you need to select the sensor that you're going to look at okay so this is io input number 14. so this is where you have to actually like you know maybe write some stuff down and uh pay attention to what i'm saying so io input 14. all right now we're going to go over here to holly software inputs outputs number 14 is break psi okay so this is a holly 1600 psi sensor so now we know that our minimum is zero and our maximum is 1600. when we come back over here to race pack smart uh, software we're going to check we're going to check input 14 the minimum result value is zero the maximum is 1600 okay because it's a zero to 1600 psi transducer so we've programmed that input and when we're done with that we would hit send configuration and it programs it so the now what we can do is instead of having to run a brake switch i've got a brake pressure sensor in the car anyway for other uses so we can come over here to brake lights right here right click constant on or on condition is going to be EFI brake pressure is greater than or equal to 25 PSI. Okay, so hit OK. Okay, I'm not going to be able to see this because I don't have the camera on, but if we go up here and right click and hit start all channel live data, here's all your output channels. So this is the current on the, on the pin, the voltage on the pin, and the status. Okay, so if we look where's my brake lights right here a2 it's off i'm gonna pump the brakes there we go now they're on and my brake lights are on so that's a, a very basic function uh with with the efi can module something a little bit more um uh intricate and what i thought was was uh kind of fun you can do you can add another function with your bump button right so we do the same thing io input number seven we go over here input number seven this is a 20 volt okay so that means that we have to make it zero to 20 right the, and the result unit is volts okay and we come over here to my horn and we hit our on condition so we can press the horn button on the keypad or if the boost switch that's on the keypad right so, so i have a i have a button on the keypad for boost master enable um if the boost switch is not enabled okay so it's less than one one means it's on zero means it's off and the bump button is greater than 10 volts um we have a horn so if we don't press the master enable if we don't press the master enable which I did not right now. Okay. Um, here, I'll show you some live data here. We go over here. And we start real time data. So notice that just the ignition is on. I'll show you here boost. There we go. Boost is on. Right. Um, so boost is off. So if I press the master enable, the boost master enables off. If I press the, horn, the bump button right now on the steering wheel, we got a horn. Uh, so if I press, now watch, notice boost on. And if you listen, I got, I got no, uh, I got no horn. So that's, uh, that's kind of a neat little function. Now, another one that I kind of came up with when I was just sitting around doing nothing since i've got so much of that time the uh i did i did what um this is a pre can thing so efi boost time okay so since it's pre-canned it's already looking at the correct sensor boost time it's already got the minimum and maximum which is zero to 120 seconds and the result is or the result unit is in seconds right so it's already pre-canned but we can come over here and we can go right rear turn signal or on condition so we can press the right turn button we can press the hazard button 
Or we can press the, the, the line lock button, right? So you're probably thinking, well, why would you want to make it look like you're doing a left turn of the line lock? Well, I programmed the right or the left and the right rear turn to turn on with the line lock. So they'll flash when you grab the line lock button. And then also when EFI boost time is greater than five and less than 10. So the car makes a pass. You let go of the button. We reach five seconds. It starts flashing the four ways and it shuts the four ways off at 10 seconds. So I'll show you that in, um, in, uh, in action here. So we go here, start all channel live data. So now, so right here, so here's line lock. Right here, I'm going to show you the first. We're going to do the line lock button, right? So line lock, and then right rear is here, and left rear is here, right? So if we watch, you're going to see these flash on and off. So, But if you notice, you'll see that the line lock stays on, okay? So the line lock's on, but our, our, uh, our four ways are flashing, okay? So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go to... We're going to uh, get the car into boost time. Whoops. All right, so we go here. All right, keep that, resume that. So I'm going to turn the master enable on, and then we're going to grab the trans brake, and I'm going to let go of the trans brake, and go. There's my four waves right there flashing. So see how they flash? It's flash for five seconds, and then it was done. So something a little neat to do. Um, again, not a necessity, but uh, if you've got the technology at your fingertips, you might as well play with it. The um, There's a lot of really cool functionality with this. And again, all of these things can be uh, re reprogrammed to do anything you want. So... Uh, EFI staging output. I don't use the staging output. So if we wanted to do something based off of the gear position, right? So we can go configure. It's a zero to three. So let's just change that one over to gear position. So, oh, whoops, channel was it? It was number 16. So we can come in over here, change this to and all this stuff is available for you to do whatever you want right advanced tables so advanced tables are active you could turn on friggin headlights or something if you wanted to um so you have access to all the advanced tables but here's we're on our inputs we go to number 16 there we go and uh the minimum is zero the maximum is three and the result is in inch and we can, uh, we're going to change the name over here to EFI Gear Position. Send that config. When you send the configuration, what you're doing is telling the smart wire what you want it to do. Just by typing in there, it doesn't actually do anything. You have to actually send it. Hit OK. So now we have the ability to use the gear position to do something, right? So let's do this. Um, here's a trans fan. On condition. Click here. Scroll down to gear position. If it is equal to, or if it's greater than or equal to, um, Let's say uh, 1.4 inches, okay? We're going to right-click. We're going to add gear position. This is just something easy I can do with the shifter right here in front of me. We're going to hit send config. I'm on, a, I'm on a wireless connection, so it's a little slow. Okay, now we come over here and watch... Um, whoops, we don't watch that. We watch Transfan. Got to find it. I have too much crap. Um, there it is, right in front of me. 
star channel live data. So when I put it in reverse, the transmission fan comes on. So you can set that to be, you know, whatever you want. You can build a range if you wanted to. So that every time the car's in gear, the transmission fan is on. So no matter what the coolant temp is, no matter what the engine RPM is, the transmission fan could always be on every time it's in gear, um, as well as being on based off of temperature. So you can have multiple uh, variables to tell it to turn on and turn off. So anyway, this thing's pretty neat. Uh, the guys over at uh, Holly and Raceback, um, I think, did a fantastic job on uh, updating this, this unit. This thing's been out for a while, and if you've already got one, you're probably really mad that you don't have this software yet. So, uh, so anyway, or firmware. So anyway, hopefully this answered some questions uh, about uh, integrating a smart wire with a dominator. And uh, remember, I, I, I've seen quite a few people um, online, you know, well, I shouldn't say quite a few people. There's a couple people online that have some rather negative things to say about PDMs, um, power distribution modules, uh, as a smart wire is, a PDM. Um, you, you have to remember that the first word in the product name is smart. So you kind of have to be smart in order to, um, to use it. So if you're kind of dumb, stick to doing dumb things. If you're kind of smart, um, take a stab at using a smart wire. So, all right, well, hopefully this, uh, this helped you out. See you.